Welcome to Blueprint Dirty. In this video, we will talk about SPI. SPI is a bus system and stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. So we're talking about a serial type of communication with some peripheral devices. So let's take a look how to wire SPI devices. On one hand, we will always have a main. This could be your Arduino, Raspberry Pi, ESP or any other type of microcomputer or microcontroller. The main device would be also referred to as a master device. Using SPI, the main module always defines the clock speed. On the other hand, we have one or multiple subnodes or slaves. Your subnode could be anything from an RFID module or an SRAM or any other type of peripheral device. But let's take a look on all the pins and how to wire them. First, we have obviously ground on the bottom, which will connect the main and the subnode. Always make sure to have a common ground in any type of communication or circuit. Talking about communication pins, we start with CS, which is referred to as chip or slave select. In case we're talking about slave select, it would be SS or chip select CS. This will be used depending on the manufacturer. Next up, we have SCLK, which is the clock or serial clock. We have MOSI, which is now the first data pin. MOSI stands for main out subnode in. We will come to this in a second. And MISO, which is not a soup in this case, which is main in subnode out. So those are all the SPI specific pins. And obviously what we have on the main, we also have vice versa on the subnode. SPI specific is that we have the same pins on the main as we have on the subnode. Same goes for many other buses, but let's take a look on how to connect them to each other. So chip select or slave select is exactly what it's already saying. It's there to select the slave, to select which of the subnodes we want to talk to. So naturally CS will be connected to CS and the direction of the arrow is here to indicate who is talking to whom. So the main is talking to the subnode or subsequently subnodes. As mentioned before, the clock frequency is defined by the main module and not by the subnode. So the main is talking to the sub and now to MOSI, main output subnode in. So this means the main outputs the data and the subnode takes it in. So no matter if we have the MOSI on the main or the MOSI on the subnode, it's already telling you who is receiving and who is sending. Because if you're on the subnode, it's already saying subnode in. So you know that's where you're going to receive. While you're on the main, it's main out. So that's where you're going to send. Vice versa on MISO, main in, subnode out. So in this case, the subnode outputs and the main inputs. So the subnode is sending the data to the main, which could be, for example, an ID that was read from an RFID card and now sent back to our main module, for example, a Raspberry Pi. So that's basically all you need to know about SPI and how to wire it. You see it's fairly simple. The errors are just here for your understanding to indicate the direction of the data flow. But basically you're going to wire a cable from point A to point B or point B to point A doesn't matter for you. A cable has no direction. Taking a quick look on advantages and disadvantages of SPI, I have to say it's really up to you and really up to the manufacturer. Quite often you find SPI as an option together with I2C. I2C has one big advantage. You can easily have many devices connected while SPI can get a bit complicated depending on the way of using SPI if you want to have more than one or more than a couple of subnodes. Meanwhile, SPI can more easily reach high data rates, while I2C was originally not designed to have high data rates. But I don't want to get down those rabbit holes. So thanks for watching. Make sure to be subscribed for more content and let me know down in the comments which interfaces you're interested in next. See you next time.